Maybe that's a secret. <laughs> So, and thank you to everyone who's attended. Thank you for coming to see me. So what's the purpose of a district governor visit? People ask me that, like, why do I have to meet you? <laughs> I don't really have to, but. So, it is a chance for me to meet you and for you to meet me, because I consider us Team 7450. I'm not Francie from the Chester Club, and he's not Richard from the Little Main Line Club. We are Team 7450. So it's with our collective understanding and collaboration, that's what will be our cornerstone of success. If we know each other, if we can work with each other, look at the huge success our district will have. Together, we make things happen. So hi, my name is Francie, and I'm from the Chester Club, and you are? <coughs> Margaret Kelly. Jane Williams from Ardmore. Oh, it's Lynn Chester. Clarice Richards, Chester. Bob Oberheiser from Ardmore. Richard Lee. Mary, member mainline. Susan, media. Hi, I'm uh, assistant governor of uh, area two, but I'm also uh, with Glenside Anderson. Chino from Philadelphia. Janice from media. I'm Gary Kao from Philadelphia. I'm Lisa, yet to be a member. <laughs> I like the word yet. <laughs> I'm Joy Charlton from the Swarthmore Club. I'm Gary, I'm a spouse married to Leah. I'm the Leah that is married. <laughs> Lower main line. And happy to be here. Lena from Malik Kimbridge. George, no, George from Lower Main Line and Tranda, my wife, from Lower Main Line. Hi. Hi, I'm Lisa O'Mahony from the Swarthmore Club. Vladimir from Lower Main Line. Barb Steele from Ardmore. Ruth Rosenberg from Ardmore. Mike from Lower Main Line. Glenn from Lower Main Line. Jack from Lower Main Line. Uh -oh. And Beverly, married to your photographer. <laughs> <laughs> From the lower main line. <laughs> well, again, thank you for joining me. So this is a chance for us to meet each other, which we just did. There will be a quiz at the end. No, I would not do that to you, because I wouldn't guess it. So the purpose of the DG visit is also for me to give you information from Rotary International. So we're all aware of what's going on. So as that comes to me, I will forward to you. And that most likely will be in my Monday morning memo, which is called? The Buzz. The buzz. The buzz. The buzz. What the Buzz? Huge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you reading it. So it's just my way of highlighting what's going on for the coming week, so you'll know. I did send one out last week that had a list of things we were doing in September, because September is proven to be busy. And I must say, of the 30 people that are here, two of them remembered what was in that email. <laughs> it's better than nothing. I don't know if you saw, and, I, and I'll put, this is partially my blame too. I put that I'm combining my district governor visit with a bit of social time and a service project. And the service project for this event today was to bring some socks or hats or gloves or mittens. Oh, it's coming back? Oh, did you see that the, we have a Phillies game this week? Yes. And the Eagles tickets are on sale? And that's another visit. Oh. And, and I do apologize. Eagles tickets and Phillies tickets sales are really low, so I've been concentrating on that. I did not send a reminder. So if your club would collect socks, gloves, hats, scarves, particularly warmer socks. Um, my next event, the end of September, I'm collecting gently used winter coats, and we'll take everything together, and I'll distribute to the local Salvation Armies. Um, I chose Salvation Army for a couple of reasons. I didn't realize Glenn was with them, but I am on the board in Chester. And so many people come in off the street with a dirty, wet coat. This way they can come in and get a dry, warm coat or at least wear it while their coat's being washed. So that's where this is coming from. Um, so it's all our faults. I should have sent a reminder. 
Um, but I'm glad to the two from Swarthmore. Give yourself credit. Credit. Did they did remember. <laughs> <laughs> we will take care of that. So Sorry, our all sizes. <laughs> all sizes. We'll take infant to adult. Mm -hmm. There are unfortunately there are homeless people that have infants and small children. And winter's coming upon us. It was so cool last night. It made me think about it more. So. So if you could, if your club, and I'll send a reminder out, if your club could do that, I'd be happy to meet someone or stop and pick them up. And so finally, this is a chance for me, if you haven't read my emails, <laughs> to say what I'm going to do for my year. Because I think differently than what has been done before. And I do that because I'm trying to encourage people to be excited about Rotary, to want to do something, not Oh, that same old thing we did last year and the year before, and 20 years ago. So, what do I have planned? Remember, I'm thinking outside the box. I'm doing things differently. And I don't have my name tag on, but must I put your name tag on the left? Well, you put it on the right? I put it on the left. So make people do something different. Little things like that get people know to notice you. So I encourage you to do things like that. You don't have to stay in the norm. Do something different. So my first thing outside this box was my drinks with the DG. It's been done before. The DGs come to each individual club and given a little speech. I don't know how impactful that was. But last year, Renee had planned that, but got a new job and said, I can't take, I have a brand new job. I can't take all this time off work. I said, well, why don't you do groups? Because that's a new thing I learned. I have monthly DG meetings. I said, I've heard about this. Why don't you try it? If it works, I'll continue it. So she did. She did it by area. Those clubs in that area met each other. But I wanted to take it to another step. I wanted not just clubs in this area to meet each other. I wanted this area to meet this area. So that's why I opened it up to anyone. If it's a good day and you could come, come join me. So that's the purpose of my drinks with the DG. And of course the name's enticing because you think, ooh, drinks. <laughs> <laughs> that's coffee, tea, and iced tea and lemonade. Sorry. So, um, yeah, and well, that was Richard's. <laughs> Richard did the wine. So Richard, thank you for that. You're making the people happy. That's good. <laughs> and the tea. Best and jasmine the tea, tea is the world. Oh, oh, best yeah. jasmine tea if you haven't had it. So uh, the other thing I'm doing a bit differently is the district conference. We know that happens in April. I'm hoping to do mine in either the end of October or early November. And I want to do it not Friday night, all day Saturday and part of Sunday. I'm going to do it Saturday morning from 8.30 to 12.30. And I'm not going to do the traditional conference stuff. I even am changing the name from conference to summit. I want this to be a learning experience. I don't want you to just come sit and listen to people talk about different things. I want you to come and learn and have your club realize, oh, we're not doing that. But if we did it, maybe we would get new members. Right now, everyone's concentrating on membership. We need members. We need members. We need members. We hear that all the time. We don't say, you should then advertise, right? You, should, you can advertise what you're doing to attract the new member. So you need to start involving your service projects into PR. You do a wonderful event, you congratulate yourself, you go home. Did that do your club any good? Probably not. It did, people who were recipients of the service project had a great time. But you need to, we need to pat ourselves on the shoulder, but we need to do it in front of an audience. We need to publicize. Because that publicity will lead to membership. They work hand in hand. But we also need to tie in the foundation part. We can't do all our service projects if we don't have money. And a lot of clubs are smaller. And to raise twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 is almost impossible or take a long period of time. This way you can raise some of the money, get some Gundaker grant money, get money from this, get a partner. That's the purpose of meeting people from different clubs in different areas. Maybe I want to do the same project you want to do, but I can't do it myself. So if we combine membership with public image with the foundation, and you work on all three things in your club, 
you should have a stronger club. Not tomorrow, maybe not next year, but if we keep doing this, we will. And I, I like this program because one of my DGs of my, we call it a class, so he's DG this year also. His district in Minnesota has done this summit for three years, and last year they were the one district in all of Rotary International that grew the most. Wow. So it does work. It takes a little bit of commitment from your president and your president-elect. If you don't have a president-elect yet, I hope you get one by the late fall before this. <coughs> It works. It's not just a lecture on you need new members, here's what you can do, or you should do public image, here's how you do a Facebook page. We need to tie the three together to make it work. So that's my goal for my, quote, summit. It's not gonna be a conference, it's gonna be a summit. And the next thing I'm changing is the springtime gets so busy. There's president-elect trainings going on. Well, it was just the holidays things going on, you get ready for spring, there's graduations and Mother's Day and Easter and a whole nonsense going on, right? And I'm going to throw in a learning assembly. They used to be called training. We're not training you anymore. We're going to learn you, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a learning assembly. But then there's that, then there's post-pets and pre-pets and so many other things to do in club installations and it's crazy. I hope to combine the in the first week of March, make it learning week. So if you're a president elect that just went to pets, you have to do a post pets meeting. That might be Tuesday of that week. And then secretaries will be trained on Wednesday and you know follow through the week Monday to Thursday. So and it's virtual. So I don't need to drag you out of your house in the middle of the March snowstorm. <laughs> I want it to be convenient for everyone, and I want to re be very respectful of your time, because many of us still work. I still have a full-time job. I still work. I'm fortunate I work for my husband, so whether I do the work at 11 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock in the morning is up to me. Uh, I have the flexibility. But I want to be respectful of the time. We have, if not children, grandchildren, hobbies, vacations, things like that. So we're trying to change this Rotary Learning Week to the first week of March. Continual, so that you know, when you plan your winter vacation, don't go away the first week of March, because there's something to do for Rotary. But to me, the one week where you pick the night you need the training is much better than waiting and going to an all-day seminar where there's a bunch of different things. So hopefully this works. We're gonna try it this year. If it does, Jan and Melissa, who follow me, will continue it. And then one of the other things I'm going to do is, you notice I said outside the box, right? So if that were the box, I'm probably outside by now, right? <laughs> um, I want to take, you know, at the end of the year we have, and it has been at the district conference, we have a Friday night dinner and we recognize Rotarians and clubs for the good work they've done or something outstanding, uh, some milestone. You've been a Rotarian for 40 years. We normally do that in a smaller group. And to me, it's not as meaningful. And then two weeks later, or three weeks later, Jan will be preparing her installation dinner. So I thought, well, I'm going to make you come out for my, look what I did this year, and recognize people, and then come back out. We're going to combine that. We're going to have a Rotary Celebration Week, or evening, not a whole week. It might take that long. It would be great. <laughs> so we'll have Rotary Celebration Night, or Gala. I'm going to call it a district governor gala. That doesn't mean you have to go out and buy a new ball gown and get a new tuxedo. It's going to be what I'm calling this year denims and diamonds. Mm. So I want you to come in your blue jeans and your white shirt and wear your diamonds. And I don't mean the diamonds you have. I mean your rotary jewels. Yeah. Wear, be proud of your Paul Harris pin, your Guy Gundaker pin, whatever, your club's pin, whatever you have, whatever your, an exchange student's pin. We need to be proud of ourselves. We need to show off. It's okay to be bold and show off and say, yeah, I've done that. I'm not gonna go up and say, well, you only have two rubies. It's not about that. It is not. It's about, look at all these people that are participating. Look at all these people that give to the foundation. 
Look at it. Look what, who's wearing a district pin. How many people have the district pin? Yeah, there's some on the table. And so is the theme pin. You know, we, we need to, I need to be your cheerleader almost. I need to say, come on, good job, guys, let's go. You know, we don't do that. And who's it hurting? It's hurting our membership. If you look in papers and stuff, you see what the Knights of Columbus is doing. You see what the Boy Scouts are doing. You see what the local church group is doing. How many times do you open a newspaper and say, wow, look what the Rotary Club of Armour did? We don't. We need to be our best advertisement. I don't know how to advertise. I don't know what to do. But if you come to my summit, you will learn the secrets of those things. Well, how to make a... Do you take a picture of 30 people and plop it? No, you take a picture of two or three people standing, working. So there's all those little hints that coming to this summit will help you understand to make those things easier. And if it's like, you know what, this is impossible, Francie. I can't go on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, and I don't even know half these things. We have a committee on the district that can help you do that. You get them the information, they can do it. You know, we have a, a, week, a monthly newspaper, the district dispatch. If your club has done something, or is doing, uh, it's not done, it's doing. If you're doing something, let them know it can be advertised. If you've done something, you can send it to them to put on the website. So we don't want to give old news, we want to give new news. Okay. So be proud of what you do. Be excited about what you do. Don't be discouraged. Call a friend. And by that I mean call another club that may help you. You know, there's many clubs out there that do winter coat drives, and you may be struggling to do yours, but so are they. So maybe together we can get more coats, or whatever your project may be. Okay, so I'm combining things as much as I can to bring you out one time. So today you had a visit with your district governor. We had some, so, some fellowship and socialization, and we had a real mini little <laughs> service project. <laughs> three things that came out one time. So you get three for the price of one. Because I am respectful of time. And I, I hope you'll be respectful of everyone else's time. So my, my last final words will be, I know I've made a lot of big changes. And some people that are used to doing things the old way, I don't, I don't be the one to tell you, but the old way wasn't working. Some old ways are. And if they were working, keep them. But please, think of something different and give it a try. It will work. It will work. Go in positive. Because after all, we are... District 7450. Oh, so listen, we are... <laughs> we are 7450. Let's go. Okay. So whatever you do, I want to make sure you do it, and you do it with kindness. You know, my theme is be kind. There's, and that's why I like to do these group activities. There was, I was working with a group who was not kind to me. So unkind that I was going to quit Rotary. I had just said, you know what? I, I'm not, I've been in this, doing this, and that's how I'm treated. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. And then someone asked me to help with membership. And can you do that? And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to leave Rotary. And they're like, what? What happened? No, no, you can't, you know. And then I thought about it, and I thought, my parents didn't raise a quitter. This would, this, that would have been the first thing in my life that I quit. And I felt so bad about it, I thought, I'm not gonna quit, I'm gonna make a difference. I'm gonna try to make a difference. I'm gonna do what I can to help each other like each other and to be kind. So my final words with you are, be kind. Thank you. Thank you.